These are your learning outcomes. I'll send the slide to you so you'll be able to get them. Uh, so what is selling? Selling is the presentation of products to customers by stating its quality, uses, usage, and other benefits with the intention of making customers accept and buy the product. So basically, when you are selling, you are describing the product to your customer and making the customer to uh, understand the need for it and then convincing the customer to buy. And uh, it's an important part of any business. So it is important because it is used to develop permanent business with existing and new customers. It helps the producer to contact middlemen uh, to enable them to stock and display the product. Uh, it applies objective and interesting sales talk to so, uh, demonstration and persuasion to influence people to buy the product. So as a salesperson, you have to be uh, very creative. Um, you have to make sure that what you are saying is interesting enough to convince people to buy. Uh, selling also in improves the standard of living of people by moving products from areas of excess to areas of scarcity. And it also uh, ensures that the right product is supplied to the right buyer. Because by the time you are talking to the buyer, you are going to be able to know what he needs and make sure that your product is exactly what he needs. And finally, selling uses push and pull strategies <clears throat> to attract mass consumption. So um, pull, pull strategies are strategies that are used to entice customers to come to you. While push strategies are, uh, you know, tailor towards pushing out enough information about your product uh, and hoping that it, it resonates with the, the customer and then they buy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so there are, as a salesperson, you have the following sales objectives. You have to increase your sales volume. You have to increase your market share. Uh, you have to make sure that you meet the uh, targeted profit, and uh, you have to also control your expense to make sure that you are not overspending. And also, you have to control your activity by doing enough research to make sure that you are not going to the wrong area, you know, to sell to people. You, are, you have to be sure that the people that you are trying to sell to can afford and uh, and can they even need your product. So uh, part of sales strategy is um is to is to sorry is there a problem you can't see the slides all right but it's showing as a slide to my side please can you send me a message if you can't see the slides Anyway, so um, we are looking at different types of selling. The first type of selling is what we call trade selling. So trade selling is selling to middlemen, like supermarkets, to enable them to get to the final consumer. So basically, you are um, you are you, you are um, going to supermarkets and telling them, okay, put, put my product in your supermarket. Be able to so that customers can get to you because it doesn't make any sense for anybody to produce and think that he's going to keep all his products in one location and all the customers will come and meet him. You have to go out there and spread your products to other people. So by spreading it to other supermarkets, other, other distributors, other retailers, you're able to get your products closer to the final consumer. Another type of selling is what we call missionary selling. In missionary selling, um, the, the, the salesperson just has all the information about the product and he's taking those information, going out to talk to people, let people know about the product, but he's not taking any orders. So he's, just, he's only just inform people about the product and go and then tell them, oh, you can go and buy it from this person. If you need it, you can go to our office here. If you need it, you can go to this supermarket here. If you need it, you can go to this retailer here but he's not going to take any orders. He's only just be going up and down and telling people about the product. The next uh, type of selling is what we call technical selling. So in technical selling, you are selling more of specialized equipment. So you are going to your customer and you are saying, oh, okay, um, you, for instance, 
you are going to your customer and you are saying you uh, you are selling this kind of medical equipment, for instance, and you supply it and you provide technical uh, expertise to the to to the customer by helping to set up <clears throat> helping to set up the machine, and then also you will be maintaining that machine for him. If the machine breaks down, he will call you. You will go. You will go and um, fix it for him. Another example is uh, POS. I don't know if there are any of us in the house that are running a business. So, um, is it? Sorry, I would. I would. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Is it better now? Send me a message, please, if it's better now. If it's better now, please send me a message. Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I can't see what you are seeing. On my side, you were still showing the slideshow. All right, so we're talking about, about technical selling. So technical selling is, uh, you know, when you are selling some sort of, okay, I was going to give you an example of POS machines that some of us that do business and we have US machines, we are aware that sometimes if the paper in the paper machine finishes, you can call the, you can call the, the company, will like the bank will have given you a number that you call, they will send you paper. If the thing is not printing, you come, they'll come and fix it for you. So that is technical selling. You understand? The, the salesman would sell and then also continue to effect uh, repair and maintenance throughout the uh, tenure, the the life the life time of that product. So another type of selling is we call it new business or creative selling. So and that's about you know trying to take new products to the market. So fresh products, nobody has bought it before. You are just creating it freshly, and then you take it to the product to the <clears throat> you take it to the to the uh, customers. You try to show them what it's about, and uh, you try to develop, you know, uh, a large market share, and you know, expand your market share and stimulate demand for the product. So, for new products, you do um, new business or creative selling. Another type of selling is what we call cold selling, and I'm sure many of us have seen this many times. You know, all these people that sell all these. Uh, a massage uh, machine and everything. Once they came to my office about last week, you just entered. You just know they don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about them. You've not you've not asked. You don't have an appointment. They just walk up to you in the street and say, "Sir, I have this product that you really like. Come, he, he does this. He does this. He does this. He does this." And it's just telling you, and you are they are usually a bother <laughs> most of the time. But you know, um, people that. Companies, companies use that a lot. They use a lot of cold selling, and it can be very effective because what it does is that it brings um, that your product, information about your product, it brings it directly to the customer. So uh, a cold, somebody, a salesman that is doing cold selling will just be monitoring from door to door to sell. Uh, another way is development selling. And uh, development selling is, you know, when you continue, you stay with the customer. When you sold to the customer, you stay, you stay with the customer over the usage of the period, telling not that you'll be living with the person, but you continue to, you know, go back to the customer. Oh, this product can possibly be used like this. Oh, have you tried using this product like this? So usually it's for, um, you know, also business to business selling where you can, you can provide updates for the customer. You can you can tell the customer, oh, okay, so you've bought this equipment from me. So basically, you are helping the customer to use that equipment to to run his own business to make sure that he too is getting is is making money by using the equipment. So you are developing new ways to use the product and going back to tell the customer, oh, you can also use the product this way. Oh, have you tried this way and things like that. All right, so uh, another type of selling is what we call team selling. Now in team selling, you know, the team would be made up of different people that have different types of expertise. So you can have a salesperson, 
the engineer, production experts, and so on and so forth. And what they will do is they will go together to meet the customer. This is also for business to business selling. You know, so you are going to another business and telling them that this is um, my this is my product. This is how it can work. And then the technical person will enter and say, okay, this is the you understand. Give the technical details. The production pool will enter and say, okay, this is how quickly you can get it and all that. So the team will go together to you know try to sell the product. And it's usually for business to business, not business to customer. So. Another type of selling is retail selling. I mean, retail, retail selling, sorry, where the customer, the, the salesperson is just in his own supermarket or store and is behind the counter and people are coming in and they are picking what they want and they are going. So this one is not, uh, is selling, but it's not the traditional selling because in this case, the salesman does not really do much to convince the people to buy. He is just like an aggregator who just puts a lot of products in front of him. And then because the producer has been advertising and you know trying to convince people, those people will come. Remember when we said uh, missionary selling? So this, this is the opposite of missionary selling. So that missionary selling person would have told them about the retailer, about how to find the retailer. And then the customers will come and they will just buy and go. So the, this salesperson is just behind the counter selling to people but not really doing any much to convince them. Um, the next one is what we call system selling. So in system selling, you would have anticipated everything that the customer needs. You know, if system selling is usually, you know, where you see things like cars, where you will see that when you buy a brand new car, I'm not talking about Tokubo car, when you buy a brand new car, but even in Tokubo car, you know, sometimes you will get it, but when you buy a brand new car, it will come with extra tire, it will come with jack, it will come with, you know, fire extinguisher. It will come with all the, so many things that, you know, that you would have needed. But imagine if you bought the car to Kubo, you probably have to go and buy all those things by yourself. So in system selling, you would have anticipated everything that the customer will need, and you will just package everything. You will package everything and just give them like that. For instance, um, I'm sure many of us have seen all these perfume gift sets where you have uh, the bottle of perfume, you have a lotion, you have body wash and everything, and you just package everything together in one box. So what they are doing there is system selling. You understand? Their actual product is probably the perfume, and that is the perfume. They are trying to convince you to buy the perfume by using all the other, you know, body cream and, uh, and uh, um, wash to do, to do so they just try to pay so it's about system selling is about packaging everything that the customer will need and say i'm pushing it to <coughs> to them now another type of selling is what we call responsive selling now in responsive selling the salesman is close to the moves tries to move close to the consumer so basically you have known your customer, you are calling them often, and you are trying to respond to what you think may be their immediate need. So for instance, you can um, have sold, you can be a, maybe a tailor, and you know your customer, you are close to your customer. So when you call your customer, ah, customer, how are you? And the customer is like, ah, I'm okay, I'm going to have a party tomorrow. As a tailor, you know that, ah, okay, should, okay, should I quickly come and take measurements? Should I quickly, should we discuss designs? And everything. So you, you are responding to the customer's need because you are close to the customer, you're able to are able to guess or you're able to deduce um, what the customer is likely to need. So um, those are the selling processes, uh, those are the types of selling. Now let's look at the selling process itself. Now the selling prospect uh, process has different steps. The first step is what we call prospecting. Now prospecting starts way before you have even developed your product. Because before you develop a product, you have to first know that it's a customer for your product. You know, it was back in the days that you would just develop, you just do any product and then you take it outside and try and start transmitting people. But in marketing today, what we do is that we first look for the customer and uh, look at, okay, what is the need out there? Because if there's no need, 
then your product is not solving anything and it's likely that it will not be bought. So you have to first define your prospects. Your prospects are your you know, likely customers. So you have to define them. Who are your prospects? Your, are they middle-aged men uh, that are working in the bank that you know, like to go to club? You can see that there's a story. You can describe the kind of person that your customer is likely to be. So you first define who your, who your intended customer is. Then you start looking, where are they? Okay, these people, I've defined them. I know that I'm looking for, for secondary school girls. So where do I find secondary school girls? You will find secondary school girls in schools. You will find them in malls. You find them in, at the cinema. You know, you find them at lessons. So you start looking, where are they possible? Where is it possible for me to find these people? So when you've identified the places where it's possible for you to find these people, then you now start looking at, okay, how much safe can they even afford to spend? Because if you're going to do a product that is too expensive, it doesn't matter that you have properly defined your, 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 your prospect. So what is, what is comfortable for them to spend? When you know what is comfortable for them to spend, then you will now go back and then you will go and relate the product <coughs> to each, what each prospect can afford, you know, their unique requirements, what they want and what they can afford. So you have to now go back and design your products in such a way that it will meet uh, the prospect's uh, requirements. So after you have done that, you have developed your product, then you now have to start planning what you are going to say, what your message is going to be. So you are making adequate preparation as a salesperson to present your product to the customer, to your prospects, so that they will receive it favorably. So the second step there is what we call the pre-approach step, where after the product has been developed, you are now developing the message. You are not going out, you are just developing the message. So once you have developed your message finished, then you do the approach, which is where you take your message out to the, um, to the, to the prospects. And you go there and speak to them and tell them about your product and give them all the information that they need. Then after you are doing that, then you are now, oh, sorry, the approach is going out to meet the, the prospects. And then after that, you present and demonstrate your product. This is my product, this is what you can do, and so on and so forth. And then after you have done that, it is likely once you have developed, once you have um, spoken to your customer, and discussed your, uh, demonstrated your product, you might have uh, objections and say, ah, this thing, I don't know, Am I, can I buy this thing? And there are a lot of reasons why your customer might object to uh, your presentation. The first one is that he may be unwilling to change from existing products. You know, he might be saying, ah, I'm already okay. I already use close up. Why should I now switch to double? Close up is doing it for me. If I now switch to double and it doesn't work well, what, do I, what will happen? Before I know what happened, my teeth will have gone rotten. <laughs> you know, so he may be unwilling to change. Another one is where he has had a sad experience with a product or a substitute. So in, in, that, in this situation, maybe you are trying to sell the person, um, <clears throat> you are trying to sell the person a particular type of, uh, a particular type of soap. And the guy is like, ah, when I use this kind of soap, the other time I had that shizu that I don't think, you know, is not the same brand as yours, but because he, you know, he had tried maybe organic soap, for instance. He had tried organic soap and it didn't work well for him. That giving him rashes. And you're coming again with organic soap, but a different brand. He might just look at that. Ah, the other one that I tried the other time giving rashes. I don't think I want to try it again. No. Another reason why the customer may object is that he's not interested because his needs are already satisfied. So what you are bringing, he doesn't need it. Everything he needs, he already has. Or you are not identifying what he needs you understand so what you are bringing is not what he needs at that point in time so he, he will object to your sales message uh try it i'll answer questions after the, the presentation please <clears throat> so um another message another way uh, reason for objection is if the salesperson uses the wrong method of approaching a buyer if you use the wrong method and the, and the customer you use that, you know, sometimes when some of these people, they approach you that they want to sell, they will not even look at your mood and see whether you are 
you, you are in a relaxed mood. You may be busy, you may be, and the other come out that I want to introduce you to my product. And you're like, look, just get out. I'm I'm, I'm busy, I'm, I'm upset at this time, and you're coming with <laughs> you're coming with products. You know, so if the salesperson uses the wrong method, uh, the buyer may raise objections. <clears throat> and that way, one is when the salesman is trying to apply high pressure, you know, is trying to sell by force and just saying, yeah, you know, buy this thing now, buy this thing now. And yeah, look at you say, is it more than this product? Why are you so, you know, uh, stressing me about it and everything? So he would object and he will not buy. Another reason is where the buyer is not the final decider. <laughs> so you have gone, you have gone to uh, speak to somebody. Maybe for instance, you are selling a product for, for children and you are, and for instance, you, you happen to see a child and you've told the child about the product and the child is like that. I like the product too, but you have to wait for my daddy to come or for my mommy to come before she can buy. So in that situation, you know, you may have a, you may not be able to make close the sale. And then um, maybe the price is too high. If the price is too high, it can affect uh, the, whether the customer will buy. And the last one is that, you know, the product is just not good. So maybe the quality, the packaging just turns off the buyer. And buyer like that, this is not the kind of level that me I'm on. I'm on a bigger level. And so he doesn't buy your product. <clears throat> so the last, uh, the next step on this in the selling process is to close, which is you know you just making sure that the customer buys the action. You have been able to to elicit the correct action from the customer, and the customer has bought. And there are different kinds of uh, closes, but because of time, we would only um, look at a couple of them. <clears throat> you know, so that uh, I will look at a couple of them. You can read up about them in your uh, module. So let's look at some of them. We can look at the direct order or trial uh, trial close, which is that you will just ask the customer, okay, make your order. How many should I? How many should I uh, uh, bring for you? How many should I, how much do you want to spend? How much is, do you understand which color do you prefer? So like that, you are just, you know, uh, giving the customer, even him, he didn't even know he was ready to buy. But because you have just said, how many pieces do I bring? You know, he will just say, you just go along and, you know, and go and make place an order. Uh, another one is that, is what we call the summary or summative close. Now, in the summit, summary closing, the, the customer will just, after you have spoken about the product and he has told you everything, then he will just give you highlights that, remember that this product, you can do this, do this, do this. You understand? And he will just summarize like that. And then the customer will say, oh, okay, it's true, it's true. And then the customer, you know, buys. You understand? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. So I've just spoken about it too. So closing is about, you know, doing something to, to elicit that response from the customer. And there are many of them, but because of time, we can't go into all of them. So you can read up on those ones in your uh, module. So once you have been able to do a successful close, you thank the customer for placing the order and you leave. You understand, then you move away from the customer and move to the next customer. You, do, you can't sit down there with the customer and then start gisting. You understand, you, you've achieved your aim, so you move on. So uh, closing is the next step. Happy departure is the next step. And then the final step is follow up. So if you are lucky enough to have collected the, the contact of the customer, you can visit them or call them, you know, to find out if they enjoyed using the product. Because this is also very important because you need to know if your product is satisfying the customer. Because if it's not satisfying the customer, you can quickly make any alterations that you need to make in order for your product to become fully satisfactory to the customer. So um, those are the steps in the selling process. What we will now look at right now is what we call the theories of selling. The theories of selling 
are also plenty and we don't have time to look into all of them, but we will discuss one of the uh, most popular and the, the simplest one, uh, which is the IDA theory. So the IDA theory says that uh, for uh, you to be able to sell, you need to first be able to call, get the attention of the customer. Because if you don't get the attention of the customer, then you know you are you are just playing. You are just you are not do, you are not yet ready. So your sales your selling method or your selling process must be one that is attractive enough to catch the attention of your customer or your prospect. <clears throat> and then after you catch the attention, you have to now maintain the interest. You have to make sure that you, your your sales pitch is interesting enough for the customer to continue to listen to you. You know, you first caught his attention. Probably you were, you were able to walk up to him and say, excuse me, sir, can I speak to you for five minutes? You have his attention and he has given you five minutes of his time. For that five minutes, are you able to hold his interest for that five minutes? Because if you cannot hold his interest for that five minutes, then, you know, once he's looking at this person, he's not saying what is interesting. He has lost interest in and he has moved on. You understand? And then once you're able to sustain his interest, you need to be able to build a desire for that product. So you are going to have to be very convincing and, you know, make sure that the customer is left feeling as if, oh, I might actually need this product on. I didn't even know before, but I actually need this product. And then your final, the final one is that you must be able to develop action. You must be able to elicit action. You must be able to make sure that the customer, at the end of the day, places an order. And the way to make sure that your customer places an order is to use your closing techniques. So as we've said, there are different closing techniques. Use any one that you feel comfortable with, but make sure that at the end of the day, after you have created that desire, you have to have a call to action. If you don't have a call to action, then you're just going to have, you are just going to have spoken to the customer and moved away and you have not achieved your aim. So uh, you can read up on other theories of uh of selling they are in your module we'll just look at one of them and we'll move on now the next thing we're looking at is purchasing and when we say purchasing we are not talking about the customer on the street purchasing whether we are business purchasing all right so purchasing in an organization is the strategic process of ascertaining the organization's material and service needs selecting suppliers agreeing on terms placing orders and receiving the goods and services. So as a business, you know, you have raw materials that <clears throat> you probably need for your production. And these raw materials, they are not going to come from heaven. You have to look for the person that sells the raw material and buy from them. So, you know, that's what we call purchasing. So, and it's a, it's a process, you understand? It's a process, it's something that as a business, you have to pay attention to Otherwise, you might run out of raw materials and you, you might not be able to produce your goods for that day. So uh, it's, a, it's a strategic process and uh, every business goes through it. Every business, no matter how big or small, you, you will go through some form of purchasing, except if your, product, your business is service-based. But even if it's service-based, you will still need one or two things to be able to carry out that service. And uh, so you would have to go through purchasing. Even if you are, you don't even at least you you need business cards, you need flyers, you need you understand all those things that you purchase uh, to be able to run your business is what we say under um, purchasing. So we will now look at the cycle, the purchasing cycle, and how it works. So the purchase cycle, the purchasing cycle starts from purchase requisition, which is when you realize that, oh, this thing is finished, you know. So you don't wait until it finishes. You, when you see that there's what we call stock level, minimum stock level. So once you reaches your minimum stock level, you have realized that there's a need for you to purchase another batch of stock. And the reason why you don't wait to get to the last, um, to get to the last um, piece of that product or that stock is because it may take some time for the supplier to supply. You can so in some cases you don't just make the request today and the supplier brings it today. In some cases, it may take the supplier almost two weeks or even a month to supply. So all those, you know, are 
the things that you would take into into uh, planning and know that okay for this particular raw material i need to order it in time because it takes two weeks for it to get to me perhaps you have, your supplier is not even in your country your supplier may be you may be in nigeria your supplier is in china so you know that even you are ordering from china it will take you at least one month so you can't you know you you can't just uh, you can't just wait until everything is finishing before you now start ordering. Otherwise, you will have a break in your business. So once you have <clears throat> recognized the need for that product and you have initiated the requisition, then what it means is that then you will place an order. You will place an order. You will call the supplier and say, oh, okay, supplier, I want to place an order. I need so, so, so amount of this uh, raw material and I need it as soon as possible. And so <clears throat> the custom, the supplier begins to look for how you meet your order. Whether he needs to package it, whether he needs to go and find it, whatever. He starts to look for how he can find what you need. Then after you have ordered, imagine that the thing doesn't come on time. You have to expedite. You have to call the supplier consistently and to make sure that the supplier knows the urgency of supplying that product so that you can your business does not ex, does not experience a break so the next step after you expedite is receiving which is when the customer will bring it and they will bring it with uh, a delivery note so that delivery note you will collect it you will collect the goods and then from there you now inspect you check the goods is it what we ordered that they sent is the quality good is the quantity okay and all that and all that so you do an inspection and it is after you complete the inspection that you will sign the the delivery note and return it back to the supplier you understand which <clears throat> signifies that the uh, supplier has delivered what you ordered exactly what you ordered and then the final step is accounting so in some cases you may need to you know you need to record the quantity that you have bought so that your stock level will go back up and then it will, you will be using it and as you're using it you will be able to know when you hit the minimum stock level again so you have to carry out accounting make sure that you, you enter the the um the amount you are bought into your inventory and so on and so forth which is the final step uh, stage in the purchasing cycle so from that accounting you carry out accounting up until there's another need to to purchase again which is you know um initiated by the, your stock reaching the minimum stock level so once that you reaches it again you it, it will trigger another purchase requisition and the process starts all over again all right so that brings us to <clears throat> the end of uh the presentation so in summary we have discuss the definition of selling. We also looked at the importance of selling. We have examined selling, selling objectives, and we have also described the different types of selling that we have. Uh, we have you know, uh, gone through the sell, selling process, and we have discussed at least one theory of selling. And we uh, finalized by looking at purchasing and the purchasing cycle. So that brings us to the end of uh, the presentation. and. I thank you for listening. So now <clears throat> we'll take your uh, your we'll take your your questions. If you have any questions, kindly send them to chat. Don't raise your hand, please. Just send them to the chat, and as you send them to the chat, I will answer them. Okay, I see that <clears throat> there are already some questions here. So um, charity, yes, hamper is a type of system selling. You know the hamper. You try to you try to look at what can people want. You know it's probably Easter or Christmas, and you want to know you know people are going to want to give a gift, and you know that many people don't have the time to start picking. So you better you just pack what they think they would like, pack it together, package it, and put it up for sale. So yes, hamper is a type of uh, system selling. Uh, so Dick, sorry about that. You 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 have the. Uh, you have the the soft copy of the module now. Even if you don't have the hard copy, but you have the soft copy. So please, if you don't have it, let me know. I would uh, put it on the LMS immediately. 
Let me know if you, if you don't have it. All right, uh, Hannah says, throw more light on the definition of prospect. Yeah, prospect is customer. It's customer, there's no, it's, we, in sales, we call it a prospect because he has not yet bought. Because the person doesn't become a customer until he buys. So he's still a prospect. So he's still in sales, we call it, we say you want to go and meet your prospect, your prospective customer. So that's a long word of it is pros, prospective customer. We just shorten it into prospect. So he's somebody that you feel that he should be able to buy your product. And uh, he's somebody that you want to talk to, to see whether he will purchase. I hope that's okay. I'm going to send the slides to you, China. So don't worry, I don't need to show it here. Career-wise, should somebody become a seller? That's Ima before becoming a marketer. Well, a seller and a marketer are two different, there are two different uh, careers. You know, the seller is the person that goes out to talk. I know in Nigeria we call it marketing, but it's not marketing, it's selling. The seller is the person that interfaces with the customer, that, you know, will, will gather data that will be used by the marketer to, 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 to create the product or to modify the product. The marketer is actually the person that is planning all the activities that is saying, oh, okay, he's getting data from the salesperson to say, okay, let's push to Mushin or let's go to K2. Our product is not moving well there. And this is the reason why. So the marketer is on the management level, is, is not, and the seller is on the operations level. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that. The seller is operational, is in the operational department, while the marketer is in the management department. So there are two different um, uh, professions. And you might, you might, it, depending on the skill you have, depending on the skill you are, if you are the kind of person that you can talk well, you can you know, convince people, then you are better off being a seller, you remain a seller, you can be a top seller. And many sellers uh, or many salespeople make more money, in fact, than even the MD of the company, depending on what they are able to sell. Because most sellers, are more, most, most salespeople are motivated with sales, in, <clears throat> sales event incentives, like commission and all that. So as a seller, you can actually make more money than even the marketer. You understand? And the marketer is just the person in the company that is taking all the information and making it make sense, all right? I hope I answered your, <clears throat> your question. So someone says, show more light on code selling. Yes, code selling is just approaching somebody. Somebody just walk up to you and say, hello, sir, can I tell you about my product? He doesn't know you, you people don't have any appointment. And immediately you say, sorry, I don't have time. He will just leave you alone and walk away and you walk to the next person. You understand? So it is a form of sales that, doesn't, it, it, it's random. It's just going up and down, walking from door to door. With, and it doesn't, and he may not be successful all the time, but at least he's able to reach out to, maybe out of 20 people that he talks to, maybe two will buy. You understand? Because they don't know him. They didn't need the product. They, didn't, they were not in search of the product. He just walked up to them. You understand? I'm trying to say, okay, this is my product. And he doesn't know whether the person is uh, can afford the product. He doesn't know whether the person needs the product. He doesn't know if the person can use the product. He just walks up to anybody he sees. That's called selling. All right? Uh, yes, I will send you soft copy. Please, Grace says, I have not been able to log on to the LMS. That's an issue that you can sort out yourself. Uh, you can sort out personally. So come in, come in so that uh, and go to the, the, um, the reception. So you can speak to the help desk there, they'll be able to help you. All right. As this uh, charity says, as a salesperson, how do you handle it when different customers have likes and dislikes for a particular product? As a salesperson, you won't be, you, you won't allow you to pay in you. You will move because you will, if you talk to 100 people, maybe only, uh, maybe only 10 will buy. You won't allow you to pay in you. If your customer doesn't have, a liking for your product, you try to convince him, but you are going to take that information, that dislike, you are going to take it back to your company so that the marketer will understand that ah, there are dislikes, so, and he will try to see how he can modify the product so that you know 
you can turn a dislike back into a like. But as a salesperson, you just take it like that and you, you don't take it personal, you just move on. Try, try and give them as much information as possible, move on. But you have noted it for the action of the marketer. <clears throat> yes, the seller and the salesman are the same. The salesman is selling now, so yes, they are the same. Okay, so Grace, on the purchasing cycle. Yeah, so um, the purchasing cycle, the purchasing cycle is just, I don't want to also overcomplicate it. It's just how you as a business will buy the raw materials you need. So it's different for every business, but we are saying that these are the basic steps. You must realize that at some point that what your, your raw material is finishing. And once you realize that it is finishing, you have to place another. And once you have placed another and you bring it, you won't just collect it and not check. You will collect it and you will check. And then when you check, you will uh, sign the development, the delivery note, and you, you will record that, okay, we, today we will bought 20 pieces of this raw material. So that you know that, okay, in stock, we have 20 pieces plus whatever your, was it meant there. So that by the time you are using it, using it, using it, let's say your minimum stock, your minimum reorder level is five. Once you are using it, using it, and you get to five, you will just immediately order again. So um, yes, the lecture will be available on my YouTube page. Development selling and responsive selling. Uh, well, they are quite similar, but the difference is that in responsive selling, there is a more personal uh, touch. You are you are selling based on the person's mood or the person's need at that point. Like I said, as a tailor, you you call your customer and the customer says, I, "I'm going to a party." Then you can now say, "Oh, let me come and take your measurements." You understand? Or oh, I even have one nice material that you like. Why have one nice dress that I just made that you like? So. You are just selling that product for the first time to that person. But development, you have already sold the product. But you are just now trying to help the person to give him new ideas on how to use the product. To, so for, for development, is business to business. While responsive is business to customer. So because it's business to business, you have sold equipment, medical equipment to a laboratory, for instance. You have sold medical equipment to a laboratory. And that's so you will now be the person that will now be helping the person, the, the, the laboratory to look that okay, this thing, you know, if you want to make money from it, because they bought it because they wanted to make money from it. If you want to make money from it, don't you think you should connect yourself in more hospitals? And then you probably help the person, oh, this is a list of hospitals that you can connect yourself with. You understand? So because at the beginning of the sale, because at the beginning when you wanted to sell the place to the person. You already, you had already told them, oh, we will continue to help you to make sure you make money from this thing. You understand? So the person is not buying anything again, but it's just that you have made him a promise at the time when you made the sale. So you continue to help him to think of new ways to make money from that thing. But responsive selling is you trying to sell a, a new thing to the customer because you've looked at, ah, his, his need has changed. You understand? So that is the difference. Yes, okay, the marketer is on the management level while the seller is on the operational level. Is in operations. The seller is going to be going out to carry out um, any strategies that the management decides. All right. Um, Lucky, you say, what if you have done all you can to convince the prospect and doesn't want to buy? Then you move on. I, I, I just said it now. As a as a um, salesperson, you don't take rejection personally. You move on. If you try, 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 and the person is not wanting to to do, then you move on. Now you leave him. You you can't you can't win all your prospects. That's the truth. You can't you can't convert up to fifty percent of your of your of your of your uh, prospects. It's unlikely that you are able to convert. Up to fifty percent of your of your prospects, all right. So if he doesn't want, you leave him alone and you move on, all right. So Charity says, what's the link between marketers and the salespeople? 
Okay, the sales pool is not is not <clears throat> the sales pool report to the marketer, but that's not to say that the marketer is the boss of the salespeople. <laughs> you understand? Is there are two different departments, but the marketer uses the information that he gets from the salespeople. You understand? It's the salespeople that are meeting the customers that are knowing whether the customers are happy with the product or not. So the, <clears throat> the salespeople report to the marketer. And also, once the marketer has been able to modify the product, he has to also now report to the salespeople and tell them, I've, report, I've modified the product too, and this is the new way that this product works. So, you know, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. <clears throat> so we have run out of time. It's already 10 o'clock. Um, I thank you all for, I thank, I will share the, the link to YouTube. I'm sorry I cannot take any more questions. We have run out of time and uh, we have to allow other people to connect. Um, <clears throat> okay, somebody has said, what is the difference between prospect and existing question, client? Your existing client is already a customer. Your prospect has not yet bought your product. That's just the difference. So it's the person that you want to buy your product. Yes, the video will be sent to, to YouTube. We are recording. All right, thank you all very much. And uh, uh, we'll end this meeting now. Have a nice day. <laughs>